Hello and welcome back to another session. Let's talk about load balancers today. It's one of the networking components that helps in distributing the network traffic. So it gets the network traffic either from the internet or internally from the servers and distributes it to the underlying servers. In AWS, the service that offers this is called as elastic load balancers and there are three types, application, network and gateway load balancers. Application load balancer is a layer 7 load balancer. That is, if you remember the OSI model of networking, it helps in load balancing layer 7 traffic, which is HTTP and HTTPS traffic, and it has both internet facing and internal options. That is, you can either set up to distribute the traffic from internet or the traffic internally within a VPC. And the next is the network load balancer. They are layer four, which helps in distributing TCP, UDP, or TLS traffic. And this is used only as internal load balancer. And finally, we have gateway load balancer. These are pretty new and it's used in layer three to distribute IP traffic and it can also be used only as internal. So today's focus is only on application load balancers. This is the model that we are going to build. We are going to start with a VPC which has the internet gateway and NAT gateway attached to allow the internet access and then two public subnets where we will create the application load balancers which will then distribute the traffic between two EC2 instances that are in two private subnets. This, this is one of the ways to set up high availability structure where you put all your server in private subnets in different availability zones and it's accessible only through the load balancer which protects the servers. In the production scenarios, you can include few more servers in different availability zones and connect it to the load balancer as well. Okay, so enough talking. Let's get into the console and see how to set this up. Okay, so we are in the AWS console now. Let's start by creating the base infrastructure first. First, let's create a VPC. And let's choose a random CIDR block and leave rest of the settings by default and we are going to create four subnets under the VPC. So the first two subnets are going to be public subnets and this is where we are going to host our load balancer and notice that I'm selecting the availability zone explicitly because at times if you don't specify it AWS tends to put the subnets in the same availability zone. We don't want that to happen because we are going for high availability setup. And this is our second public subnet. And also be careful while specifying the CIDR block. Uh, the CIDR blocks of two subnets should not overlap. And then we are going to create two private subnets. So these two private subnets are you going to be used to host our EC2 instances. So we are creating private subnets because we don't want anyone else to access the data in our servers. So this is the last private subnet. And what we are going to do is we are going to allow only load balancer to access these uh, VMs. We are going to set that up by using the security groups. So we, are, we have created the four subnets, two public and two private. And next let's set up the internet access. So for that we are going to create internet gateway and NAT gateway. So the internet gateway is going to take care of the internet access for public subnets. So we have created an internet gateway and let's attach it to the VPC. And next is a NAT gateway. So the NAT gateway will take care of the internet access for VMs in the private subnet. So we are going to host the NAT gateway itself in the public subnet. And we are going to set up the connectivity as public because we want our VMs to have internet access. 
and create the NAT gateway. So once we have both the gateways, let's go back to the route table and add the routes for internet connectivity. So every VPC will have a default route table all automatically created while we create the VPC. So in that route table, I'm adding a route for uh, O.0.0.2 to the internet gateway. We are going to associate the public subnets to this route table. So edit the subnet associations and select the two sub public subnets which we just created. And next we have to establish the routes via NAT gateway. So for that we are going to create a separate route table under the same VPC and we are going to edit the routes and add a route where the destination is 0.0.0 that is internet traffic and the target is NAT gateway this time. And to this route table we are going to associate the private subnets. So select the two private subnets that we have created and associate them to that route table. So we have the base infrastructure so a VPC, two, four subnets under that, and the internet connectivity. So the next step is to create the EC2 instances in the private subnets. So let's get into the EC2 dashboard and create the two servers under two private subnets. So this is the first instance. As we are doing everything in the trial account, I'm going to go with a free tier. Feel free to choose the one which suits your workload. And we are going to put this under the private subnet. And in addition to the general settings, I'm just adding a simple user data script, uh, that is a bash script, which is going to install Apache and just replace the uh, index.html with a different content just for us to identify uh, from which VM the content is being displayed fr uh, from. So I'm just changing this to be, uh, this is instance one. I'll put this uh, in the description, the script itself. And for the security group, we are going to create a new security group and allow SSH access just from the uh, local IP address. And we are going to revisit the security group and we are going to enable the access from load balancer, but we are going to do that after creating the load balancer. And finally, we are acknowledging that we are having access to that key pair. And we have our first instance. So let's go ahead and do the same thing and launch our second instance. The only difference is going to be that we are going to chain, put this in the second private subnet. And let's paste the same bash script, but this time let's call it as instance two. Let's leave these as the default settings. And the security group, let's select the existing security group that we just created while creating the first instance because we are going to have the same security configurations for both the instances. Okay, so let the instances be launched. In the meantime, let's go ahead and create the load balancer itself. So the first thing to specify while creating the load balancer will be the load balancer name. And let's choose the application load balancer for us. And the load balancer name can be anything as long as it matches the naming conventions, which I mentioned here. And let's go with internet facing traffic. Then I'm selecting the VPC that we just created and actually before that you will need to select the listeners so this is where you specify which type of traffic that is the port and the protocol that your load balancer listens to 
you have HTTP and HTTPS options. I'm just selecting HTTP and port 80. Then the public subnets under the VPC where we are going to place the load balancer itself. And you can choose the add-on services if required. Let's skip that for now. And if you had selected HTTPS, then you would have got an option for specifying the certificates at that point. And next is configuring the security group behind which your load balancer is going to be placed. Let's create a new security group and leave the default config of port 80. And we are going to add the VMs to the load balancer. This is done through the target groups. So you register your VMs to a target group. In our case, the private VMs and then attach the group to the load balancer. Uh, next are the health checks and thresholds. So health check is the parameter in seconds and that is the amount of time your load balancer waits before determining whether your instance is healthy or not. So it polls your VMs frequently and if, you, if your VM did not respond, then it stops sending the request for that particular VM. So we are adding the VMs to the registered targets. So that's it. Let's review the details. So be wise in choosing the health checks. It depends on your application response time. And so we have the load balancer placed on, in the public subnet and it's uh, sending, redirecting the traffic to the VMs in the private subnet, which is put in the targets. That's it. So it's going ahead and creating the security groups, load balancers and the target groups. So the last thing which we have to do is edit the uh, VM security group to allow the load balancer to send traffic to the VM. So we are going to edit the inbound rules and allow port 80 traffic from the load balancer security group. So uh, for the source, you're going to select the security group under which the load balancer is placed. So this is important. This is how your load balancer communicates with the VM. Save that rule. So it should all be good. So now if we go back and look at the target groups, your VMs will become healthy at any point. So uh, your VM takes a little bit of time for the initial registration. So if you check the health status, it will be initial in the beginning stages. And if you wait for a couple of minutes, there we go. So the health status of the VMs is healthy, which means we are good to use the load balancer. So let's do that now. For that, get into the load balancers and grab the DNS name, which you see in the description. So if you want, you can set up a Route 53 and set up your own um, domain name and redirect the traffic from the Route 53 to the load balancer. But in this case, we are using the DNS frame from the load balancer directly. So as you can see, uh, it fetches the data from the instance. And every time you refresh the page, it automatically redirects the traffic to the different instance. So you can see it's being toggling between instance one and instance two. This is because load balancer by default uses the route drop-in algorithm. So it keeps switching between the VMs as long as they are healthy. And if one of the VMs is unhealthy, then it stops sending the uh, request for that VM. So it's all done by this listener. So the listener listens to the traffic from port 80 and redirects it to the target group where your instances are placed. So that is this. This is how you create a basic application load balancer with the servers being placed in the private server, sorry, private subnet. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and see you soon in the next video. Thank you.